Hey guys, what's up? It's Wolf here, and today I'm going to be doing a beginner guide for Dragon Blaze. For those of you players who are getting into the game, and those of you guys who are interested into getting into the game. So, first things first, we're going to talk about what is Dragon Blaze. So what Dragon Blaze is, is like an auto battle strategic game where it actually matters what characters that you put in your party for like each mode. Because there are some allies that are better than others, then there are some allies that are probably worse for the place or mode that you're trying to do. So actual team comps are actually in this game. If you're thinking you can make a character in this game that can like mow through every last other character in the game, that is not the case because there will always be an ally in this game that will shut that character down because there are always counters to a different character. Now Dragon Blaze also has like a tense story and a pretty chilled community as well. Like you'll you'll barely find any toxic people, at least from my experience, I've barely found any like real toxic players. I've only found like mostly positive and laid back people to talk with and you know have a good conversation with. So it's definitely a welcoming community to where they would like teach you and show you the ropes. So with the introduction out of the way, let's get to talking about allies and how you guys make them and pretty much how they work in this game. So let's go ahead and talk about allies. First things first, we're going to talk about the stages of allies. So the first is normal, which are the weakest allies in the game. Then you turn those normal allies into DFIs. Then as those DFIs are created, then you have to use the DFIs to make keys and keys are used to make transcendence which are the strongest units in the game as of right now all right next we're going to talk about the different stages of enhancement now this is going to be mostly the bread and butter of the game this is going to be mostly the thing you're going to be doing a lot in this game so your goal is to get your allies to max then ultimate but as for any unit that is below triple S, you should not get to ultimate. If anything, keep every other ally that is double S and down to max. There is no need for them to be ultimate. So before that, I'm going to talk about how many enhancement it takes to get an ally to max. So each ring has their own set number to max. So let's go through this list here. C rank allies take 3 enhancements to get to max, B allies take 4 enhancements, A is 5 enhancements, S is 6 enhancements, and 7 is 7 enhancements, and as for triple S's, it takes 8 enhancements to get them to max. But at this point, when your triple S is max, you want to make them ultimate which I'm going to show an example of right here. I have a triple S ally right here that is ready to become ultimate and deified. So, first things first, you want to limit break at this point when you get to max. And limit breaking takes triple S's. This is why I say it's very important to have triple S's. It only takes five triple S's to max a unit out. Anything above that will not be taken. And now that this triple S ally is ultimate, this is going to lead us into our next segment. So this is where we start getting into deifying an ally, into allies that are pretty much the main characters of the game. So, to deify a unit, when they get to ultimate, you need a resource called Essence. These Essence are pretty easy to get. They're farmable from different, like, areas throughout the map. So the first group of Essence you're going to run into are the Light Essence. And the Light Essence are pretty much going to be in Chapter 1 through 2. And then there's going to be Hero Essence that you guys encounter halfway through Chapter 3. Then, in Chapter 4, there's going to be Titan Essence. So as you guys can see, each character that you guys are trying to make take different types of Essence. So both of these guys take Light Essence. But this character takes Titan Essence. So, so let's go ahead and start deifying this character, which is a warrior. 
So before that, let me explain how you guys get a certain ally if you guys are looking for whichever one. So to make the warrior DFIs, you have to have a warrior ultimate. So I have this warrior ultimate, I can make these characters who are warriors. Boom, she is achieved. Now if I was to make a rogue character, I would have a different pick. Now here's something important to remember. So let's go back to a warrior. As you guys can see, Gala is no longer available through these guys because we have already because we already have her deified. So there would be no point in making another one. She is no longer a choice. But as you guys saw in here, there's no other choices between these two. But there are certain characters in the game that require themselves to be deified into a different one. So you can only get Refuge King Graham through his standard normal. If you get what I'm saying. And then there's another character. This character, Pata, that you can only get through his normal as well. So that should clear up a lot of like confusion of like how you get a certain character because some of you can only DFI through their set characters. So now you have your DFI character. So here's the fun part. You're going to have to ultimate her again. So yeah, go to enhancement. Now here is going to be a little bit different making her ultimate. So each enhancement costs you one essence. And I do mean one, it's not like I'm going to use multiple essence for DFIs. So it's pretty much repeating the same process as the normal enhancements. But this time you have to have essence for it. And I repeat, do not use any triple S like allies to get any of the other triple S allies to max. If anything, I recommend you guys use double S's or S ranks to get the triple S's to max. Then you're going to need those triple S's to get her to ultimate because when they're max, they only take triple S's. All right, the next thing we're going to get into is combining units. Combining units is going to be very important. The ally has to be maxed and be combined with another max ally. So this is the reason why I tell you guys not to ultimate the allies because they do not have to be ultimate to combine. So as you guys can see, I have two max allies with me right now. Well, three if you're counting this one. But as I go into the combine, these two only show up. The rest of them do not, just because they don't meet the requirements. So it'd be pretty useless to actually try and, you know, try and combine them. So here we go. That is how you make a triple S unit. And that's how you go up the ranks through like the others. Then if we were to go into the uh, S ranks, then we're going to have to max out two S ranks to make a double S. So you guys see how that process is going with combining. All right, so next we're going to talk about keys. And keys are going to be a little bit more difficult to make just because the DFIs, you need DFIs to make keys. And those DFIs have to be ultimate. If you do not own them and they're not ultimate, you cannot make keys. So here, as you can see, I need Kronos, Death Crown, and King Graham DFIs, and they have to be ultimate. And I need 30 Titan Essence to make this key. And once I make that key, these keys are put into your inventory. So as you guys can see here, once I make this key, it's inside of my inventory, and I have to put it on a DFI unit that is ultimate. You cannot put it on any other ally that is not DFI or if it's a DFI, it has to be ultimate. If it's not ultimate, it cannot carry a key. So here is pretty much what the keys look like when they're being summoned onto the field because they change from your DFI to the key versions. So let's say, for example, I have Helios and she goes onto the field. She turns into this key if I have this key on her. Then she'll be fighting as this dude instead of her actual DFI. And keys are actually stronger than the DFIs themselves. 
Now, keys cannot be put on any class. The keys have to be put on the set classes. Now, let's say, for example, you're playing as a Paladin character. You can only put a Paladin-based key onto that Paladin. So let's say, for example, if you wanted to put Thanatos onto like one of your Paladins. That is a no-go because you can only put Archer keys onto Archer like deified units that are ultimate. So yeah, it's pretty tedious to go through and it's rather annoying. And here is also a chart of how much it takes to actually get a key to max and how much it takes to get a key to ultimate. So here's also where I tell you guys that triple S units are everything in this game. <laughs> like normal base triple S units are everything because you need them to enhance like these different characters. So, from the first stage into max, for keys, you're going to need one ally. So, the max enhancement is 9 for these, for these keys. But, when they get to max, they're going to take 2 allies. But it only takes 6 enhancements to get to ultimate for your keys. And pretty much it's a guarantee to get the enhancement through. And you also get a special ability when the key is ultimate. And another thing is that these keys only take triple S's. So yeah, same thing for the trans, they only take triple S's. So everything key and above take triple S's only. So now that we pretty much finished keys, now let's talk about transcendent allies, which are pretty much your DFIs going from DFI to transcendent, which is pretty much the strongest units in the game at this point in time as this video is going up. Now that could change in the near future. So I'll try and keep the guides as updated as I can. So to make these transcendent allies, you're going to need the ultimate version of the DFI. And you're going to also need the key that the DFI takes for the trans. So you guys saw me ultimate Omega. And I also have Falcon ultimate as a DFI. So now I want to go to the transcendence and look for Falcon. And now I can transcend him. So let's go ahead and click transcendence. But oh, we don't have essence that are called transcended essence. So I could make Falcon, but I need Transcendent Essence. So here is how you get Transcendent Essence. So let's go back to my inventory. So I want to go to Workshop and Combine. Then, as you guys see here, this is where you make Transcendent Essence. You need 50 Transcendent Essence to make a Transcendent character. You are going to need pretty much all three Essence. You're going to need Light Essence and Hero Essence and Titan Essence to make one Transcendent Essence. So as you guys can see here, I can only make 102. That's because I only have 102 um, Titan Essence. So I'm going to make 50 just because that's how many Falcon needs to be trans. Boom. Now, here's something you guys need to keep in mind when making transcendent characters or even trying to focus on them. You're going to need a lot of gold because they're they're not cheap. They cost a lot. And I'm going to tell you guys that now before you start rushing through. But don't let this deter you from like actually trying to focus on like the transcendence and everything because it's not all that bad. Because the further you get in the game, the more gold you're going to start earning. And you can earn gold pretty easy if you guys do raids and you guys start farming the areas because the higher the area the more the gold you get so yeah the further you get in the game the more gold and there are accessories that actually increase your gold and at this moment in time I don't know how long this is going to stay but I'm pretty sure it's a limited time thing there's actually accessories in here and the coin shop and the coin shops are pretty much like arena coins 
there are these fairly cheap accessories that are in here that are called prepared adventurer rings and they only cost a hundred for each now these go on your main character they do not go on your ally at all do not put them on your allies put them on your character so just buy at least two or three just to pretty much make sure they're not like limited time things if i were you i would get them right away all right so let's get back to the trans and how to make them so it's going to cost a lot of goat i've already warned you guys that it's going to cost a lot it's going to cost a lot so i already have my goat prepared thank god for those um accessories because over the nights of farming they have helped me out so but before you start making the trans ally there is something you guys need to note your dfi will disappear when making the trans but you can make the dfi again so it's not completely off the table so i'm going to show you guys pretty much an example of that so let's go ahead and make trans falcon all right let's make them now it does remove it from like all other slots and everything now i got him so he does remove from all the modes just because I won't have the DFI anymore. As you can see, he's gone, but I can make him again. Where's the Paladin to show an example? I'm pretty sure I got one Paladin, right? No? Oh, well, can't really show an example then. But just to let you guys know, you can remake him again. So now that I have him, I can level him up, put gears on him, and I'm gonna go into explanation of some more things right afterward. So that is pretty much how to make a transcendent unit, though. All right, so next we're gonna talk about linking your character. So this is gonna be extremely helpful into conserving like farming. So I don't have any gears on Trans Falcon. No gears at all. As you guys can see, he's completely empty. But now let's go to Helios and look at her gear. Now, what? let's say if I wanted to link all of these gears up, with Helios and put them on Falcon while they're still on Helios. Linking is definitely going to help. This little chain right here, just click it, go in, and I'm going to take this out just to show you guys. So pretty much I'm going to put in Helios into the first slot because she has the gears on her. So I want to put the gears on the Falcon and I'm going to show you guys pretty much how this actually works boom all the gear that is linked up with Helios is now linked up with Falcon and now he has and now he can use her gear and yes you could put them in the same squad and they would still be using the same gear from each other so yeah that's a unique thing and I thank them for actually putting that in now I need to go put in everybody else back, back in and now you see the little link symbol to tell you if they're linked up now we're going to talk about the last thing of allies and this is going to be formations formations are very important for your characters as well as they give buffs that will help you out so the most used one i can say right now is fire squad but you have to have a team dedicated to fire squad so each formation has their own different like needs so the formation's ability won't activate unless you have everybody that fills out the roles. So I don't have another tank in my party, so this buff won't activate, so I don't get decreased damage by 10%. So make sure you guys pick a really good formation for yourselves because it's going to help you out in the long run. If anything, the most used one I know is Fire Squad. So if you guys want to build for that, more power to you. All right, the next thing we're gonna talk about is gears and how to get the better ones. Now, the better ones are from raids and raids are actually pretty simple, but to get the raids, we're gonna to have to complete the area first. So not the whole chapter, just a certain area. So if you want this raid, you're gonna to have to complete Golem Hill. Then you will get this raid and it will open up to you. So let me just explain raid a little bit. So you're going to go in with three other players, or if you, if the game can't find three other players, it's going to put you in with AI bots. 
So the AI bots are pretty strong early, but late they start to get a little bit weaker. If you guys want to know what rewards that the raid gives or what like level it is, this is, this is pretty much what it has to offer to you. So yeah, keep that in mind. And as for the shop here, each time you finish a raid, you get one raid essence that is right here. Then you can turn those raid essence into gears that you've actually been looking for. So that's pretty much an easier way to farm gear. Now I'm going to go into the raid and see if we can find any people. And if it doesn't find any people, it's going to put me in with AI bots. So I know some of you guys aren't really comfortable with farming with others, but it's actually needed like late game. Early game is be pretty simple. Oh, I found somebody with me and it also put us with AI bots just because they couldn't find anybody else who were doing the raid. And since we're high level, we killed it pretty easy. So yeah, if you're looking for the gears, here they are. But at the end of the raid, you get a random choice between getting gears. So there's pretty much four slots. You can pick which whichever chest you want to open, or you can let the game pick for you. Then whatever is in that chest you get. So it's only one to every player. So that's pretty much how raid works. That's pretty much how you get better gear. You just put your hands inside of like the farming gods and hope that you get a gear that you need. And even if you don't get the gear that you need, the more times you complete it, the more raid essence you have, then you can just go directly to it. So next we're going to talk about enhancing your weapon. So enhancing your weapons is pretty easy. You click on the weapon you want to enhance, go to enhance. Then this is where everything starts to get like a little bit pricey, not too pricey, not as pricey as the trans. But this is where you have to put in like different other gears to make them stronger. So early game you can only make your gears max because late game is where you can start making your gears ultimate. And I'll show you guys the reason why after I show you guys how to do this. So you can put triple S's into triple S's to get them to max. Or if you have any like double S's laying over, you can go ahead and get that 50-50% chance of getting, you know, like an enhancement off a of triple S. So then, as you keep going, eventually it gets to max. Now, the reason why I say you pretty much can't ultimate them early game is because there is sort of these things called limit stones. And you can only get limit stones from a raid in chapter 3, which is called Nobla. And Nobla, you enter in with your full team and start fighting the boss with four different others who will also be having their team in there as well. So it's pretty much everybody goes in with, with their set team that you guys have set up here. This is the only raid that allows you to do that. The other raids you can only go in with your own like main character. So here's the harsh part of Nola. They recently buffed it to where it has like a lot more HP and it would not be fair to put you guys into these like early game. So it's pretty much like a late game, like a mid to late game thing. And your team's gonna die pretty fast. So here are the rewards, and this is where it's kind of harsh on newer players or players who are just getting into the game and doesn't have like really powerful units. Whoever's doing the most damage and is at first has a chance to get a S rank through triple S rank limit break stones. If you are lower, you can only get a S rank or a double S limit break stone. So rank 1 or 2 is probably where you want to be. If you are only the lowers, it's it's fine. As long as you guys finish the raid, you and they will still have a chance of getting your weapon to ultimate. I'm going to show you guys how it pretty much works. Limit break. As you can see, you could go ahead and put this batch in. And since this gear is triple S, it's going to be at 25% chance of success. Now if I put in double S, it's going to be a 50-50. If I had triple S, I'm going to put them in there and there would be a 100% chance. I do have those, but I'm saving them. Let's go ahead and show you guys how it works. The cost does go up the more 
and more like you pretty much succeed. So it's pretty costly, but like I've said, it's not as costly as making trends. So you're in luck there. Ah, man, that chance. But the great greatest part is they give you fail bonuses. So if you fail, you get a added on enhancement bonus to where the more and more you fail, the better and better of a chance you will succeed the next time. So next we're going to talk about gems. Gems are pretty important because they have main stats on them. And those main stats are strength, intelligence, dex, and stamina. Now here's where I tell you guys what those like will probably more than likely be on. Your intelligence gems will probably want to be on mages and encanters. For your decks will probably be on your rogues and your archers. As for strength will probably be on your paladins and warrior. But sometimes there are special chance where there can be allies that work different with like a different like gym. So Let's take example as Kamel. She is a paladin. So what people have said is that she benefits more from intelligence than strength. So yeah, you got to basically read the skills and you know just decide on pretty much which one is better for which ally. Or you can just ask around the community and they will help you out as much as they can. And yes, you can combine from like lower tiers to make them to higher tiers. Combining them will make them higher and way stronger and just make them like pretty much all more useful to you. The lower ones won't be all that strong. I do recommend you guys keep enhancing them up until they at least get to triple S. Then if you guys have any leftover like triple S's, go ahead and start making them to it's the stars. And they will help you out so much more. And how you put them on your weapon is click on the weapon you want them on, go to this gym here, and drag them over. And then you put them on, but it takes gold to take them off. You can put them on for free, but you take but you have to take them off for a cost. Alright, next we're gonna get into skill cards. Skill cards, they cannot go on your main character, they can only go on allies because allies are the only ones who can take those passives. So there are pretty much different stages of these um, skill cards and you can combine them to make them into stronger skill cards. The highest skill card is triple skill cards. But here's the thing, it takes four S's to make a double S and it takes four to make a triple S and it takes four to make an ultimate skill card. And then you can turn those ultimate skill cards into double skill cards. Double skill cards have like, double skill cards are pretty much this. They have two effects on them. The normal skill cards just pretty much have one stat. So you have a chance of like getting different ones. They're not all like set and like combine this and you make a certain card. They're pretty much all random as you combine them. So if you wanted to make a triple skill card, I'm going to put myself out for this and you drag this over to here, drag both of your doubles. Then once they're securely in there, you go to combine triple card to make a triple skill card. Then boom, pretty decent stats. Not something I would actually, you know, always want. So I pretty much unchecked it. If you don't check it, you will end up making another double. Or you have the chance of it falling back down to an ultimate. So pretty much combining two double S's has a chance of giving you another double S. Or it has a chance of going back down to our normal ultimate. So if you guys are trying to get to triple S's, make sure to have combined triple S checked then you get a guarantee of getting the triple skill card. Then once you get that triple skill card, you can go ahead and go to your character, go to their passives, then pick whichever one you want to be on them. Uh, I haven't really thought what I want on Falcon though. I'll choose a defensive one for now. 
I'll change it up later. And it does cost gold to put on to the allies as well. That pretty much explains pretty much everything about gear. Now we're going to talk about combat and different modes. The different modes are arena, which is pretty much having your whole team go up against another team of other people's AI. Now it's not live battle. If you guys want a live battle, there is tag battle, where it's pretty much a one-on-one -on -one of each character. Like you pick a team and they pretty much go one-on-one -on -one at it and you just keep going until the other team runs out of allies to fight with. Revenge of Bathar Bathargar? Yeah, I can never get that name right. I hope I got it right that time. Which is pretty much doing waves and seeing how long your team can survive. Next you have Tower. As of right now we have two different towers. One is Hero where it uses regular allies and one is Buster where it can use Keys and Trans. Keys and Trans are not allowed to be used inside of Hero mode. So in the future they will combine these two to where it really doesn't matter whatever you use you can go in into the tower. But as you guys do tower it's going to give you guys various rewards. So I'm going to show you guys a few of the rewards here whenever it decides to load in the rewards. So each place you do you get more and more rewards. So do make sure to do tower guys it's going to help you out a lot. Next we have world bosses which are pretty much straightforward. There is a flaming turtle, golem, hydra and Cerberus. So world bosses, no matter if you're weak or strong, you always should do them. Because as long as you get rank up there, you get rubies and coins. So yeah. Then you guys have already seen um, boss raids. And then there's guild stuff, which is pretty much guild loot. Which is pretty much guild loot. If you have a guild, you go in and... You work with your guild to finish all these stages. It's pretty much you have to participate in the area to get rewarded. If you don't participate in any way, yeah, don't get rewarded. It doesn't matter how much damage you do to it, if it's like one point, you still participated in a way and you get rubies for it when the team completes it. Now, you don't have to complete all the areas to get the rubies from it. As long as you complete that one area before the time is up for the main remaining days. For us, we already completed it, so we already got ours as soon as we were done. So complete it, the whole thing and you get your rubies right then and there. If you're struggling with area 1, uh, when the days remaining is over, you get pretty much the rubies from 2 and 5. You don't get anything from 1 since you didn't complete it. And as for guild battles, Guild battles are a little bit more straightforward. You go in with your own team and as for Guild Helper, you go in and pick whoever you want to let other guild members use. So go out, exit, and it registers that character that you want other guild members to use in the guild battles. Now I put in random. Now here's just pretty much everybody else's characters that are a part of the guild. Then you just pretty much go at it against other people who also have those strong, strong teams. This was a mistake. It's pretty much like normal arena, but yet you have your guild members allies to help you to make it a little bit more easier or you know, at least put up a good fight. And that's pretty much for combat, guys. There are other modes and everything that are coming to the game and things that are going to be... Or things that I didn't explain. I'm going to let you guys, you know, figure all that stuff out. Because it's more interesting if you guys actually figure out some more things and, you know, team comps and all that. You know, trial and error and dedication into, like, actually trying to figure out the rest of the game. Because I don't want to, like, give you guys too much because then that's how people, like, lose interest. You know, I just pretty much taught you guys how to enhance and make different units and then farm gears. Everything else is for you guys to figure out. So with combat done and talked about, I'm going to leave you guys with three tips. But the first tip is 
do your dailies, which is down here in schedule. Do all the dailies because it gives you rubies and that will help you out a lot. Sometimes they give you uh, coins, but doing your dailies gives you free essence. Then there's our special events where you guys can look in those. And the next one is always log in. All logins give you like a special reward. Log in 28 days and you get a free key or a choice between getting 10 allies and 100 essence. So always make sure to log in because if you don't get those 28 days within the month. So let's do an example and say you joined the game on the 15th. There is no way you're going to get the key from that month. But there are beginner guides when you come into the game where you can get a free trans and a free key. So you really don't have to work your butt off for your first trans because once you make that account, you can go ahead and do all of the guide quests and at the end of it. Then at the end of it, you get that transcendent ally. And here's the last tip I'm going to give you guys before I end up the video. This is one that a lot of veteran players have told people not to do. And that's do not sell your allies. Do not sell your allies, guys. Combine them. I don't, I don't care if you like, get gold from them. It's minor gold compared to the gold you can farm. Do not sell allies. Combine them. Y you listen to me? Combine them. Do it. But hope this guy helped you guys out. You know, I've been working on this for the whole week. And, you know, trying to get like a whole bunch of footage that I can put together for you guys. If you guys have any more like tips for the players down below, all the veteran players. And as for all the veteran players, if somebody's looking for some help, do make sure to like try and help them on this video. Or if I missed anything, do put it down in the comments, you know, help out a little bit. And us as the veterans will try and help you out as much as we can. So, till then, hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Peace out.